Amit Shaw, everybody, thank you. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for uh, joining me. I realize that I am um, the 30 minutes standing in your way of lunch, so I will uh, try and distract you pretty quickly here. Um, the title of our session is Cash Isn't King, User Adoption Is. And um, our agenda is threefold. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on myself, our, our organization, and our product called Wattify, tell you about our history, and then finally, I'm going to give you four things that we've kind of realized around um, how we've driven user adoption and why user adoption is really a key success for us um, early on in our product. So again, uh, my name is Amit Shah, I'm the founder of Conagent, and Conagent implements is a services organization we implement um, ERP and CRM applications. We extend those applications with the OutSystems platform. Um, I'm supposed to be joined by my colleague, Justin James. Justin, do you mind standing up? Justin, you might recognize from the uh, community forum, he's been working with OutSystems for about three and a half years. He is uh, feeling a little under the weather, so he's not gonna help me um, demo, so I'm gonna try and demo with the microphone. So um, our product is called Wattify, and um, Wattify serves a niche industry, and that industry is called CrossFit. Anyone here familiar with CrossFit? One, two, three, we've got a handful, great. Um, and so there's a vernacular that the CrossFitters use, and, and one of them is WAD, and WAD is the workout of the day. So I'm gonna teach you a few words, and the first one is WAD. Everyone got that one? Easy enough. Okay, so the next thing is what is CrossFit? And so what I'm gonna do is show you um, a 90 second clip. Hopefully we have audio, let's see. Yeah, we do. You haven't heard of CrossFit? Let me tell you about CrossFit. CrossFit is a lifestyle in which you are prioritizing your health. The ability to do many different things at a high level of intensity. I think it's the absolute best way to help you reach your fitness goals. For me, it's making me happy. A fun way to get fit with Lock Mountain Pipe. The last person finishing is just as important as the first one. It's this team atmosphere that ends up making you better as an individual. It's camaraderie, that family that you end up building, and the energy that you get back from it yourself. That's CrossFit to me. When you come to a CrossFit gym, everybody knows your name, everybody loves you, and you're a part of something bigger than just getting a workout. CrossFit gave me that something extra that I kind of needed in life. It's my outlet. I love it. It's my passion. It's commitment. CrossFit is a sport now. I like the challenge. I compete with myself. Um, I'm healthier. I am stronger. Even though I was sore, I was, you know, getting a little discouraged. You know, I felt accountable to my community, or I felt accountable to my class because they were looking for me there. Finding CrossFit and having to work really dang hard for whatever your goal is, whether it's to compete or just get a damn pull up. I love it because the workout's different every day. I can come in and I don't know what I'm doing. Everyone is welcoming, everyone is cheering you on. They don't let you quit, even if you want to quit. We all share. Okay, so hopefully you have an idea um, of what CrossFit is. What is Wattify? Wattify, and I gotta read this myself. We are the first all-in-one CrossFit-specific box operation athletic performance tracking platform. What that means is uh, we do things like help box owners manage memberships, uh, manage their athletes, charge credit cards, um, do class res reservations, track the performance, allow their coaches to see their athletes' performance, um, be able to suggest weights, et cetera, et cetera. So, what I'd like to do is demonstrate our app, and the easiest way to do that is to have a quick um, CrossFit competition. So we're gonna do a WAD, and today's WAD is um, one minute of burpees, and we're gonna uh, go head to head, and the first thing we're gonna do is um, get all of you to come up here, up front and center, please. Let's thank our um, volunteers. So we're all gonna learn how to do a burpee. Who here knows how to do a burpee? One or two people, okay. And I'm gonna try and do a burpee with my mic in and not fall over. Um, okay, so the burpee starts with, so I'm gonna show it to you first and then you'll do it. A squat, throw our feet back, we do a push up, chest to the deck, back to a squat, up, and a clap overhead. Okay, but go ahead and try it. Chest to deck, chest to deck. Okay, and where are our judges? I thought we had a few judges. Oh, I know. 
Can, can, can yeah, we need a couple of judges. Okay, so um, there's, a, there's a new word. Remember I told you I'm going to teach you a new vernacular. The word is no rep. And when you are no rep, you didn't do it as prescribed or for the proper form. So I'm going to show you a couple things you don't want to do. Um, not getting your chest to deck, so that's this and back up. That's a no rep, so you have to do it over. Um, the other is um, not extending your hips fully. So that's going down, coming back up, and sort of doing one of these. Doesn't count, okay? So we're gonna go men first. Um, our judges are gonna watch. You're in the honor system in terms of counting, and our judges are going to yell no rep um, when you don't have a good rep. You guys wanna go over there and keep an eye on them? Okay, the other side of this thing? Yeah, yeah, the other side. Okay. Oh, and with any good competition, there has to be a prize. And um, the winners will receive a highly coveted um, Waterfy apparel from our online store. Okay, gentlemen, ladies, you're gonna you're gonna sit back and watch this one while we watch the guys. On account of, I'm gonna say three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Feel free to cheer them on, yell at them. <laughs> Tell them to go faster. <laughs> Ask them if that morning cigarette was worth it. Twenty-five seconds, guys. Keep going. <laughs> Judges, make sure those reps count. <laughs> Come on, keep going. Ten seconds. <laughs> keep going. Come on, guys. Tell me, keep going. <laughs> awesome. Come on, ladies. No, 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 no. 60 seconds. Absolutely not. David, how do we do? David, how many reps? Can you speak? Okay, Jeff. How many reps? More than 10, less than 30. Okay, no one counted. Ruben. Oh my gosh. Okay, so 30, I know, <laughs> really, that didn't work, okay. Uh, ladies, you really want to do 30 seconds? Okay, 30 seconds it is. <laughs> Are you ready ladies? Three, two, one, go. Judges, count for him. Good job. I saw a no rep. Chest all the way down. You're almost done. Five seconds. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um, so what we'll do is we'll make sure everybody gets t-shirts. You are all winners. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, did anyone count the ladies? 30. <laughs> Sounds good. 30 for all of them. So we're going to enter those results. If you've got your cell phone out, um, you can go to... Uh, nextstep.waterfly.com and you'll see um, what we call a whiteboard. So one thing I didn't tell you about in the CrossFit world is when you walk into a CrossFit gym, um, what they're going to ask you is your name, unlike most gyms that you go into. They're going to take that name, they're going to write it on a whiteboard. Then they're going to ask you to do your workout. It might be um, deadlifting, back squatting, whatever the case may be. And they're going to ask you what weight you used. You're going to do a workout like you saw with conditioning and it might be how many reps or how long did it take you and they're going to write that result. And so whether you like it or not, 
you are now competing with your um, peers. And so what we do at Wattify is we take that and we eliminate the whiteboard, uh, we make it electronic, and we allow you to compete all day throughout all of the classes and really throughout the history of that gym so we know who has the best performance at that gym over all time. Okay, so back to our agenda. Um, I gave you a little bit of background on CrossFit and what we do at Wattify. I'll talk to you about our history. So um, how do we get started? In uh, October 2011, I started CrossFitting. I fell in love with it immediately. And what you're looking at is um, what's called post-WAD. That's kind of what you end up looking like at the end of a WAD. And um, in my early 20s, or mid-20s, I did a lot of weightlifting, and, and I, was really, um, I was really strict about my diet, and I kept a journal, and I, I documented everything I did. I documented my lifts, I documented my, my uh, food intake, uh, my water intake, and it allowed me to perform better. So I knew that I, I really can't, you can't improve what you don't measure. And so I looked for apps on the market for, for CrossFit, and I was actually shocked um, that I couldn't find an app that was easy to use um, in the CrossFit um, space. Uh, about a month later, a friend of mine suggested I go to uh, the business of software. Um, and it's really meant for software entrepreneurs. And there's about 200 attendees there. And I was um, probably, I believe, the only attendee who didn't either own a software company or work for a software company. And the appropriate thing to say is that I left that conference feeling inspired. Um, the reality is I left that conference um, with envy and jealousy. Um, I spoke to the individuals there, and you could see the spark um, in their eye when they talked about their, their applications and how proud they were. And so I left that um, conference um, knowing that I was going to build an app. And so in December of 2011, did some balsamic mock-ups of what I thought Wattify should do, um, did some research on different platforms, um, was fortunate enough to find out systems, immediately fell in love with it. In uh, February 2012, went to training in California. And myself and another developer in three weeks built our first beta product and put it inside our first box. Now, so that's another term I didn't teach you. Um, so rather than call it a gym, they call it a box. So um, you'll even see our tagline as results in a box. So um, in May of 2012, after um, two beta customers, we realized that we thought we had something special. We're going to actually um, go after this line of business. And what you're looking at now is, uh, is a picture of our, of our it's kind of nostalgic for us, our, uh, our first iteration of Wattify, you'll notice kind of the out-of-the-box um, styling about systems. So um, in May, um, we decided to take the business serious, and we wrote up a business plan. And we wanted, I was very um, adamant about making sure this business plan fit on one page. And I'll show you what it looked like. And the idea is we actually didn't have a business plan. And I'm going to tell you why that's important. Um, we, had I written a business plan, I probably wouldn't have built Wattify, and I'll show you why. Um, at the time, the market looked like this. You had a founder, me, who's a hack of a programmer. I guarantee I'm the worst programmer in this auditorium. Even if you're not a programmer, you're a better programmer than me. Um, at the time, there were 4,000 gyms, 3,000 in the US. 50% of the market was already owned by two vendors. Those vendors um, had either 15 or 10 years experience in their business. And then, um, at that time, I wasn't the only person with this idea. Every month, and today, every month, a new product um, pops up that's trying to solve this problem. The other thing I didn't realize is just how strong um, the CrossFit community is. They're very um, careful to make sure that they keep CrossFit um, and its culture um, to the core and that kind of big business doesn't come in and take advantage of it. And this is the real kicker. Um, CrossFit gyms, don't, most of them don't believe in technology. They believe that CrossFit is meant to be about um, chalk and sweat and barbells and concrete walls, and that really technology has no place. So what's the result today? So um, I kind of I say that I'm um, fortunate that we had that ignorance, kind of that childlike ignorance of the market, and we did it anyway. Today, um, we have customers worldwide. We have um, what we, we would call a rock star athletes using our product. Here's a picture of Rich Froning. Rich Froning won the CrossFit Games in 2011 and 2012. He uses our software to run his gym. He uses our software to coach his athletes, and he helps promote our product. Um, here you'll see another picture. Um, there's two of our Wattify employees, and there's other three, three gentlemen there, our um, top 10 athletes from last year's games. In the middle is Graham Holmberg, who won the games in 2010, also uses our product and helps promote it. Um, 
Reebok is the official sponsor of CrossFit. They uh, signed in a 10-year agreement. And about two weeks ago, we went live with uh, Wattify at their um, on campus, uh, their, their world headquarters, CrossFit gym in Boston, Massachusetts. So, oh, thank you. So I think it, it, it definitely helps um, add in terms of credibility and, and um, you know, kind of positions us to say, well, there is a place for technology even in a CrossFit gym. So today, one and a half gyms go live every day with um, Modify. Um, as a business owner, I, I want to see that turn into three tomorrow, but can't have everything. Um, and so it kind of begs the question, how is that possible? How do we get into this market where stiff competition, uh, technology isn't always um, accepted very easily? And the answer is um, that we focused on one simple thing, and we focused on our athletes. And athletes don't buy our software. It's owners of gyms that buy our software but we chose to focus on um, providing value initially to athletes. Okay, so the next section is um, all around driving adoption. So I'm gonna walk you through four um, kind of realizations we had. They may not apply to every business, um, but they, they certainly seem to fit ours. And so the, the first is, um, it's not all about the software. So I'll, let me talk to you a little bit about that. We actually ask, ask rather all of our CrossFit boxes to sign an agreement. Um, we have this, when we're building our software, we have this concept of a no homework policy. And so that means that, you know, when you go into CrossFit Gym, what, what people really love about it is that in 60 minutes, I get this great workout, I feel accomplished. Um, and our belief is that um, you should also be able to track all your performance in that same 60 minutes. So we don't want to give you homework because um, I don't want you to have to go, hand, go home, sign into your computer, and then enter your results. Um, and so with that, we... We, we mandate, rather, that all of our boxes um, put in a, a kiosk. Um, we'll sell them the hardware, we'll show them install instructions, and we ask them to send us a picture of it. We also tell them where it belongs in the gym. And so we've actually done it. People have put kiosks in the wrong place. They put it in the lobby, not in the gym. And we'll say, sorry, I can't create a user account for you. I can't do any training until you physically move that. Um, number two, we make them sign a contract that says they're no longer going to use um, a whiteboard to write their wads. And our, our idea is that you're either committing to this digital environment or you're not. And if you're unwilling to sign that contract, no problem, um, we'll just part ways as friends. We also have a no opt-in policy. So we've run into some gyms that say, well, I'm not sure about this technology, and I'll, I'll pilot it with 10 people, and then the other 300 can, you know, if it goes well. And um, we, in, in our experience, that just never works. Again, you're either committing or you're not. So the result of us um, creating these policies um, is that we get 95 to 100 percent adoption of our application. Um, it's dramatic when you look at the competition. The competition gets five to 10 percent. Here's a picture of the kiosk. Um, typically, somewhere between a 42 and 55 inch screen. Um, on the left hand side, you typically see the wad. On the right hand side, you see what we call the coach board. The coach board are, is where athletes log in. They see their past performance. Or if you're a coach, you can look at your athlete's past performance. So the key takeaway is to have the courage to tell your customers what you need from them to drive success. Um, today, we do zero outbound, and um, we only manage inbound. 70% of that inbound comes from um, what we call really our extended sales staff, which is our customers. And, and that's why we, we um, drive user adoption and need success. Number two, wake up with your users. Um, so I don't mean that literally, because that would be a different business model. Um, but what I mean is, if you can, make your app um, a part of their everyday life. And so what I'm going to do is walk you through a day in the life of Wattify. So it's 6 a.m., I wake up, and we actually have um, athletes tell us this, that before their feet touch the ground, the first thing they do is they grab their iPhone, or their mobile device, and they check the wad. At 7 a.m., they're having breakfast, and um, they're telling Siri what they ate, journalizing their intake. Uh, they're getting um, feedback from a nutrition coach that they can assign. At noon, they're at work. They're checking the whiteboard, and they're, they're looking at their friends that they know that go into the morning session, seeing how they perform, perform um, and potentially coming up with a goal of their own, and their goal maybe simply just to beat their friend. It's now 5 o'clock. They're going to go in and work out. They're going to sign in at the kiosk. And one thing that's interesting here is I talked about that user adoption and why it's so important. 
probably one of the biggest enemies in a CrossFit box is athlete churn. And so a lot of these different applications have this concept of, oh, we track attendance. We can tell you when people come in, when they're there, when they're not there. Um, the challenge you have is that if your only um, goal is to track attendance, athletes don't really care about that. That doesn't inspire them to log in, right? And so what we do is we inspire them to log in because as soon as they log in, for every one of those movements of the WAD, we're gonna give you all this past performance data. If you're doing weight-based training, we do the math for you, real simple stuff. Um, but we allow you to get a goal in mind. And so um, if you did 95 last time, let's try for 100. And that's how we're gonna get those improvements, through small incremental improvements. And so with that, we now have amazing <laughs> Um, trending reports. So we can tell a CrossFit box that um, you know, these athletes were coming four times a week, they're now coming one. Something's happened, maybe they're injured, maybe they had a bad experience with a coach. You might want to call them and see if there's something you can do to remedy that experience. Um, so the class ends at six o'clock. There's a bit of a queue at the kiosk and you're in a bit of a rush. So you grab your mobile phone and you enter your results on our mobile coach board. Finally, it's 10 o'clock and you realize you didn't sign up for the class tomorrow, you want to reserve your spot, so you're going to use your mobile phone and reserve a spot. Okay, so our third is focus on user experience. Now I will say, um, we are not UX experts. Um, we've done a few things that we think have um, worked pretty well, but we have a lot of room for improvement. Um, so I, we have a, uh, we kind of have a golden rule um, within our development of out systems. And the, and the rule is do it in out systems or get out. I know that sounds a little harsh, um, but there's a lot of advantages to using the, the out systems platform. And one of them that we love is being able to turn our application on its head without risking um, today, you know, 36,000 athletes data or their experience. Um, so there is one rule that kind of trumps the do it in out systems or get out, and that is um, the user experience. So there are all these wonderful things that you can do with jQuery. They do come with a risk because you don't necessarily know if they work on all platforms. Um, and so we have on certain situations, this coach board is one of them. The coach board is, uh, by no fault of our systems, just a, a heavy screen. You can have 30, 40 athletes sign into it. Um, a WAD can have four or five components and it becomes a heavy screen. So what we have done is leverage jQuery um, to make that screen sing and go really, really fast, driving that user um, adoption, the user experience. The last thing we need is a CrossFit box to say, well, I got my 60 work minute workout in, but then it took 12 minutes to get everyone through and log the results. Can't happen. And then we do some small things. Um, so uh, depending on what the component is and how the uh, coach has configured that WAD, we can anticipate uh, or know what needs to be filled in, what's really kind of an exception. So we'll do simple things like move the cursor there. The second thing we do, and I wanted to talk about, about in terms of user experience is um, a couple of challenges we ran into the mobile. One is allowing our users to sign in once and never sign in again, in theory. Um, and then the second is being able to anticipate what they want to do and where they've been. And so, you know, the challenge you have with, um, you know, the, the, the mobile bookmark is that it creates a new session. You don't necessarily know where they were or what they've done. Um, so one, we've, you know, used this the concept of a token and we allow our athletes to, to, to sign in once and stay signed in. The second thing we've done is we store um, the state of their mobile um, in the database. And so we can do things like, hey, you haven't signed in today, let me show you the WAD and allow you to easily sign into class with one click. Hey, you have signed into class, you haven't entered all your results, I'm going to take you to the mobile coach board. You've done all that, you've entered all your results, now I'm going to take you to the, the mobile whiteboard. And so we've got some feedback on our recent release of our uh, mobile experience, and our athletes have come back and said, wow, I just, I love, you know, the new stuff you did with the mobile. And, it's like, and we asked them, well, what specifically did you like? And they can't answer it. And I think, I don't know this, I think that's a good thing. I think we're kind of secretly doing the right stuff that makes them feel good, but they don't really know it. Um, I, I don't know that, but that's, that's kind of what I had to guess. So the fourth realization we came to over the past few months is that Wattify is no longer our product. Um, it is a product of our community and of our users. And some things we've done, uh, we created an ideas board, and um, so you can see here, allow athletes to comment on each other's results. It's the number one idea right now, and it is the number one thing that we're working on. So we allow our user community to drive um, functionality within our application. The second thing that we did 
and I can't even take credit for it, this gentleman, um, Randy Jacoby, um, came up with the idea, just kind of a fan of our application, reached out to us and said, hey, have you thought about creating a Wattify user group? And if so, may I lead it? And of course we said, well, geez, uh, sure, that sounds like a great idea. And so now once a quarter, we meet with um, coaches and owners, and we talk to them about our roadmap, um, we get feedback from them, and we allow them to help drive this, this functionality. It's been, it's been fantastic because um, when we release functionality, um, not only do the athletes want it, but so do the owners. So, let me see if I can summarize. Um, we really, we, we, didn't, we didn't build the best piece of technology with Wattify. You're not gonna compare us to Apple. Uh, we didn't build the cheapest product. In fact, we're the most expensive product on the market. But what we think we did build is the best overall experience um, for coaches, owners, and athletes. Athletes can improve their performance, coaches can be, become better coaches, um, and owners can kind of fulfill their mission, which is to create this community of healthy living. Um, and so with that, I will leave it to questions. Thank you.